that in the confession of their sins, when they are purged and made worthy to receive the fire of God as their food and drink in the Holy Eucharist. This all bears witness to the mystery of our salvation in Christ. If you want to say that we receive a message, a doctrine, then understand that the doctrine is directing us to a way of living that is no longer a living in the world, but in the mystery of Christ God incarnate, living in the mystery of his body that he received from his holy mother, the Theotokos, and that he transfigured and deified and filled with the fire of his glory, and that he then gives to us, through the hands of his holy apostles, the bishops and the priests of his church, to transfigure us bodily and spiritual, spiritually, so that we become divine fire, and our death becomes the death of death, and the beginning of life everlasting in the resurrection of Christ. This is a hidden mystery. Worldly eyes cannot see it, but it is known in the inner man of those who believe. It is known. It is seen in an unseen way by our spirit. It is known truly because, precisely because it is not a school of ideas that one knows discursively. It is known in faith. And faith is knowledge that cannot be rationally demonstrated. Why? Because faith is a supernatural relationship through which in an unknowable and so undemonstrable manner we are united to God in a union that is beyond intellection. I'm quoting St. Maximus the Confessor. Faith is not, that is to say, as the Christian faith is not a set of ideas, the learning of which makes one smart or a Christian. Rather, faith is a mystery of becoming united to God that transfigures one body and soul, that makes one a new creation, that makes one to be alive in one's inner man, so that even though one dies, yet one lives. Because what dies in one's body and soul is not the life of Christ that now lives in the believer, but the death that separated us from God. In the church then, we are not in love with ideas, as beautiful as those ideas are. We are, we are in love with God and with his son, and with his holy mother. We are in love with the saints. We are in love with people made in the image of God. We rejoice in one another because we have received the heavenly spirit. We have received the Lord, the giver of life. We have received the living fire of God who now burns in us as he burned in the bush on Mount Horeb that was not consumed, as he burned in the womb of the most blessed virgin, and far from destroying us or consuming us in his fire, the Holy Spirit rather makes us to be all fire. He even makes us to become mothers of God. He makes our bodies and souls that were dead in sins and trespasses to be alive and transfigured in the glory of his all-consuming fire. He makes us who were darkness to be light. He transfigures our hearts, the sanctuary of our inner man, from being a tomb that housed a dead soul into a bridal chamber that houses the heavenly bridegroom, who comes to us in our fallenness and becomes bone of our bones, flesh of our flesh, so that we can become bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh, so that it is no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us, transfiguring us body and soul, deifying us through faith, through a relational power 
but brings about the immediate, perfect, and supernatural union of the believer with the God in whom he believes. Again, I'm quoting St. Maximus. In the beauty and mystery of the Lord God becoming flesh of the Holy Virgin, creation is transfigured. In the church, we enter into the mystery of this transfiguration of creation in its movement of time. Because the Feast of Transfiguration on August 6th begins a 40-day period, a kind of a Lent that will conclude on the Feast of the Elevation of the Cross on September 14th. This Lenten period was heralded by the Feast of the Procession of the Cross on August 1st. In this Lenten period, we pass over from the falling asleep of the fair vocals on August 15th to her birth as the daughter of God on September 8th. We pass over from the old year into the new year of the church. Do you see how the Pascha of the fair vocals, the passing over from her dormition to her nativity, shows us, as it were, the substance of our own transfiguration in Christ? And that to be transfigured is to, into Christ is to be translated from death to life. And that this, if you will, <clears throat> is the face of salvation in Christ. And that our transfiguring salvation is realized and experienced in the Theotokos and not apart from her. For the mystery of God becoming flesh and dwelling among us would not have happened without the Holy Virgin's loving obedience to the will of God. And he became flesh of no other woman than the Blessed Virgin. He did become that, and that he did become flesh of the Holy Virgin means that salvation is not the cognitive embracing of a school of ideas. It is a mystery of flesh and spirit. Salvation is the renewing transformation of our body and soul, by which we become temples of God, even mothers of God. Salvation, then, is an experience of joy, of light, of hope, of a heart that is being transfigured from stone to flesh. And you see how the very structure of the Church's liturgical seasons centered as they are on the mystery of the Theotokos Pascha and of the Lord's Pascha. The Lord's Pascha, not only his Pascha, but his birth and his conception, the whole life of Christ, takes place completely within the embrace, the maternal embrace of the Theotokos birth on September 8th and her death on August 15th. Do you see how this reveals the very essence of salvation in Christ to be that of the love of the Son for his mother and of the love of the mother for her son? It is to take up our cross as we will do on September 14th in order to be transfigured body and soul, in order to be saved in the love of Christ and his Holy Mother is not a cold, dry abstraction of rational propositions. To take up our cross is to learn the love of Christ and His Holy Mother. It is to begin living, breathing, and having our being in our hearts, in the kingdom of heaven that is within us, in the Lord who dwells in the house of our heart. The Lord sends the 5,000 this morning on their way after satisfying them with the breads and the fishes. Both breads and fishes are emblems of the Lord's own body and blood. The bread, obviously, but the fish, an ancient acronym of the church, Ictus, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Where does the Lord send them? after giving them these emblems of his own body and blood. Well, where, do, 
does he send us after feeding us with his body and blood this morning in every divine liturgy? We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. And in that light, we can see where we're going. And where are we going in this life? If we're not going with the risen Lord Jesus to our heavenly home, let us renew our resolve to take up the transfiguring and life-giving cross of the Savior and in the loving embrace of His Holy Mother, let us strive to, the, to love the Lord and His Holy Mother and to do the will of God. Amen. Most holy Father, all save us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.